everybody, welcome to Tucker Creative Play. I'm your host Emma and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be doing a cooking video and focusing on the ingredient that is shiso. Have you guys seen shiso before? Have you tried it? Let me know. It is a flavor that is so strong. <laughs> I believe shiso is related to the mint uh, family. Doesn't taste like mint. Whoa, that's a strong smell. Shiso is pretty common in a lot of Japanese dishes. I like it when it's cooked, but when it's raw, it's like eating a straight herb. It's very herbal, very strong flavor. So today we're gonna be making individual dishes that uh, focus on shiso or have it as a part of the dish. Uh, here's a bunch of shiso. <laughs> you can get shiso for really cheap. I got this bag of shiso for a uh, dollar. Today my plan for cooking is I'm gonna make tamagoyaki, the rolled egg omelet thing, but I'm going to include shiso and also put a crab stick in the middle and I have a usually like really basic way of making tamagoyaki so I've looked up a nice recipe that will add a lot of flavor because I do a sin where I dip my tamagoyaki in ketchup and I want to stop doing that and make it more flavorful. Hey guys welcome to my kitchen. I live in a regular size apartment up here in North Japan in Iwate prefecture and I have a really tiny kitchen area like the general room is decent, but the countertop space is abysmal. <laughs> so because of that, I find myself not experimenting with cooking very often. It's really tough to work with one square foot of countertop space. But today we're gonna try out a brand new recipe using shiso, which is actually an ingredient that I don't think I've ever cooked with. It's certainly not something that I would reach for on a regular basis. It's a very distinctive flavor, I want to say, and you need to know how to pair it well with other things because I feel like it wouldn't really work with lots of food. But if you know what to pair it with, it can be really nice if it's done correctly. I've eaten it a lot in sushi and in various dishes, like when I go out to an izakaya, and I know that if I can cook this correctly, I will probably like it. So today we're gonna to be making agedashi tofu wrapped in shiso leaves. So the traditional agedashi tofu recipe doesn't call for shiso leaves. It's just a plain fried tofu in a like warm broth. It's really tasty. I'm Jordan. We're back here in my tiny Japanese kitchen where we're gonna be making something special, something summery. Today, we're gonna to be working with shiso. While it usually comes in green, I scoured the convenience stores, I searched the supermarkets, and I found something special. I found red shiso. Unlike green shiso, which can be found pretty much all year round, red shiso can normally only be found around the summertime and only in a few select stores. I had to search a couple of stores before I managed to find this delectable red shiso. And I found a... I found a lot of it too. <laughs> we'll make something a little bit strange with the shiso. Maybe it'll come out well. We're going to be making akashiso kakigori. Red shiso shaved ice. And yes, for this video, I do not own a kakigori maker, so... We are going to be making kakigori by hand. So I've got a bunch of other ingredients with me, which I will show you now. So the ingredients for my tamagoyaki are, of course, eggs, soy sauce and mirin. Mirin is like cooking sake, dashi, so that's like a soup stock. I have prepared some earlier, which I just used like dashi no moto, so like a soup stock base and added water. Shiso, but not this much, a little bit less. And katsuobushi. So katsuobushi is uh, bonito flakes. And yeah, those are my ingredients. So it should be pretty straightforward, I'm hoping. But I always have a tendency to F these things up. Just for your enjoyment, I'm going to eat one leaf of shiso. It can be enjoyable, but it just depends what mood I'm in. Zakimas. Woohoo! Ah! Yeah. Ah! Oh no! Oh! Woo! Mm -mm. Oh! Ah! I like the scent that strongly comes out through my nose, but the flavor of the leaf itself is a little bit bitter. So this is kind of a special version, maybe something you'd have in the summer because the shiso gives it a bit of a fresh flavor. So fingers crossed it goes well. I'm excited to try it. The ingredients are pretty simple, so let's go. Our main ingredients are tofu. This is probably about a medium firm. Some katakuriko, which is like a starch to batter the tofu in. And of course our shiso leaves. This is what they look like. They usually come in a pack of 10 like this. And then for our flavorings to go along with the fried tofu and shiso leaves, I'm gonna be using liquid aminos in replacement of soy sauce, just because I love the flavor of this stuff. If you have never tried this, do give it a shot. You can buy it on iHerb if you don't have it at your local supermarket. 
It's so tasty. Also got some roasted sesame seeds to top the tofu in perhaps. I'm not quite too sure. We're gonna test a bunch of things out and see what tastes the best. Some plum. Plum actually goes really well with shiso. You'll see the two paired together very often in snacks and in sushi. And finally, we've got a tube of ginger, which I think should also go really well with the liquid aminos and the fried tofu. We're gonna start with our red shiso juice. And for that, all we need is a lemon, sugar, red shiso, and a jar to put it in when we're done. We've given our red shiso a wash. We've got a pot full of water ready. So we're gonna boil this, put the shiso in. Then it's a case of adding the sugar, the lemon juice, leaving it to boil, then letting it cool, pulling it in a jar, and then putting it in the fridge before we start shaving our ice. Easy, let's go. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix the eggs. But for the eggs for tamagoyaki, you don't want them to be really fluffy. You don't want them to have any bubbles. So you're just trying to try to mix them in a way that doesn't create bubbles. Oh, my breath smells so strong of shiso. I haven't actually made a uh, tamagoyaki in a while. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix them that much. Then to that, I'm going to add six shiso leaves. Now I'm gonna cut them up into little pieces because I kind of wanted to just mesh in with the, the omelet. here. Now actually my favorite way to have shiso is tempura. I really love tempura shiso. It takes away the, the really strong flavors and it makes it way more mild and the crispiness is just so good. So if you ever get like a tendon or like a tempura set, you gotta have the shiso. It's really really good. Then I'm gonna add three tablespoons of dashi. So we have one teaspoon of medium. A third of a teaspoon of shoyu. And then it says we need three grams of uh, katsuobushi. You know what, I'm just gonna put in one of these. This looks about right. And I'm going to mix it. I'm nervous, I haven't done tamagoyaki in ages. Okay, step one is to remove as much water as you can from your tofu. And just let it sit here for a little while and absorb as much of that liquid as possible. Next, we're going to slice this into little steaks. I'm probably going to do three of them. Oh god. All right, we will use two of them. <laughs> okay, the next step is to cover these in some katakuriko. And finally, we take our shiso leaves and we're gonna wrap one around each piece. Mmm, they smell really fresh. They're so hard to explain, like the scent of them. So, apparently, getting the leaf to stick to the tofu is like the hardest part. It just uh, doesn't wanna stick because they're not sticky. But I think maybe if I fold it around like that and just kind of let it sit there for a while, it might mold into that shape. <laughs> Perfect. While those are molding, we will heat up some oil in the fry pan. While our water is boiling, we're gonna cut our lemon in half, get the juice out of it, and then measure about 100 or 150 grams of sugar, and those are gonna go in the pot. Once the water is nice and boiled, turn it down to a simmer, start adding our shiso to the pan. Perfect. That has been simmering for a few minutes now, and if we check the color, it's really going a nice reddish tinge. Next, we're gonna add our lemon juice and we're gonna add our sugar to the mixture. Leave it to simmer for about 10, 15 more minutes, and then we're gonna leave it to cool. Oh wow, that has seriously changed the color. Adding the lemon juice and the sugar to the mixture has changed the color. Now we're gonna leave it for another few minutes. kind of short if this goes well. Unfortunately to make tamagoyaki you need a tamagoyaki pan. But like you know I thought why would I get a tamagoyaki pan? I'm not gonna use it for anything other than tamagoyaki. But I use it for tiny sausages so uh it's worth it. <laughs> and sometimes one slice of bread. I also got some imitation crab. It's a bit big so I need to cut this down. Start up the pan. You can get the oil hot but not too hot. So before you put your egg in the pan you gotta test to see 
Oh, it's good. Oh, it's too hot. That's too hot. Yeah, that's too hot. Can we calm down? It's just too hot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer and roll, layer and roll, layer and roll. Here we go. Where? Just don't judge me, okay? Like that's that's what I don't want. All right, I'm gonna put this crab. Here we go. Oh please, oh please, wrap around it. Yeah, baby. Nice, nice. Oh God, it's breaking. It's fine. It's okay if the middle one's a little bit messy. But you know what? Maybe it's fine. Maybe we just keep going. Next layer. Allo oh, the shiso's all sticking in one spot. That's not gonna taste good. Can we chill a little bit? I forgot to oil it. It's okay, it's all right, it won't let me lose sleep at night. Generously coat your pan in some oil and once that heats up, we will start frying our tofu. So once they look nice and golden brown on each side, we're gonna take them out and put them on some paper towel to get rid of some of the extra oil. And the hard part's all done. I think they turned out really well. They look super good. I'm really pleased with myself. The batter is nice and crispy and light. So I'm gonna put these on a plate and then prepare some of the toppings. Once all the ingredients are combined, pour your shiso juice through a, for a sieve. I put mine into a big old bowl then, then leave it there to cool. I'm gonna pour mine into this jar I have. Then put it in the fridge so it can cool down. Pro strat. All right, let's keep going. Look at that! There we have it. She's so juice. For those that have watched this far, and they're thinking, Jordan, listen, I love shiso, it looks really good, but I don't want to make kakigori by hand. I don't have a kakigori maker. How do I use this shiso juice? Well, the answer is easy. Get a cup, fill it with ice, Get your shiso juice. We actually don't drink this by itself. So because it's more of a syrup than a juice, we're gonna start with a little... Ooh. Then we're gonna top it off with water. And a big old... It's actually my first time trying shiso juice, so uh, let's give it a go. Oh, that is lovely. Oh my gosh. Mm. It's light, it's refreshing, it's got that get them kicks from the lemon, get the sweetness from the sugar, but the shiso comes through so well. It's not overpowering, it's not bitter, it's not unpleasant, it's very mellow, it's very mellow shiso. This is fantastic. Don't even worry about it. Usually I don't have that much seasoning on my tamagoyaki, so I'm excited to taste with all the, the extras. Oh, it smells really good. If we can just make it look good too. Oh, I keep breaking it. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> No! As long as the final layer looks fine, and everything is fine. Oh god. Look at you. Are you getting there? What? Oh no, don't put another layer and put oil, Emma. Smart. Smart brain. Alright, here we go. I keep breaking the egg. Oh, there's an air under the egg. There's an air bubble. Come on, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, baby. Oh, you need more time. Oh, I'm not I'm not cooking it for long enough. I'm just a, a, such a silly goose. You have one more layer to look beautiful, okay? Go. Oh, look at all those bubbles. Oh, no. We don't like bubbles. Maybe I can make it work. Okay, let's give it a go. Oh, I really have a question. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, baby, no! You were supposed to be so cute. You know what? Maybe that's fine. I'm sorry I mistreated you. Whoa, big mama. Here's this pretty lady. I'm gonna cut it in half. Then the presentation might look even better. Give a slice. Ow, that's hot. Mm. Oh, I just tasted the egg a little bit. Okay, so I'm just winging this part, but I really want to try these two different flavors with it. So I'm going to square a little bit of ginger on this one, a little bit of plum on this one, and then a tiny bit of the liquid aminos. This is quite strong. I'd say it's stronger than soy sauce. So that's probably enough. And finish it off with some roast sesame seeds. And we're done. Let's go try it. I really hope it tastes good. I think it has potential. What do you think, Mauro? Does it smell good? He's not so sure. 
It is many hours later, my shiso juice is chilled, so now let's make a little handmade kakigori. Simple, simple. The easiest way to make handmade kakigori is to freeze your ice into a rectangle or square shape, a shape that's easier to, to shave off of. I have lots of these milk cartons lying around, so I washed one out, filled it with water, threw it in the freezer, and we have a block of ice. Let's open this up. <sighs> like this. You want to leave a piece on here for your hand to hold on to. This ice is obviously cold. Man, I'm not done. I have not done this in ages. Oh my gosh. The process is actually pretty simple. Now, while lots of you are going to want to do this and try to shave the flatter surface of the ice block, the actual trick is to shave the corners off first and then sort of work your way around. So starting at this corner, we want to sort of cutting down and diagonally. I get this beautiful like soft ice. So I'm going to be cutting down and diagonally sort of into the ice block. You know, turn the block round. Oh, look at these shards. Ugh, oh, beautiful. Little kakigori mound right there. Now we're going to work quickly. Here's our shiso juice that I had before. I put some in tiny containers and I dropped it in the freezer to make it nice and cold. We're going to spoon it over our kakigori make sure look how nice that looks shiso kakigori we should have a little fun we should make this look pretty we should try guys come on maybe just for decoration we can pretend that it's wrapped in in shiso that's kind of cute right guys that's better. I don't know if you can tell. There's a lot of layers going on. There's a lot of layers, but it looks kind of ugly. But you know what? I made it. So to me, it's beautiful. Now let's give it a taste. I'm really curious about what all of the added like stock and everything, and, and if you can still taste the shiso, because after you cook it, it does get a little bit less flavorful. This is a huge, I, maybe this was supposed to make two of them. Oh, it's a mess. I can't even separate the crab. The crab's just come out in a whole piece. This is so hot. You see all the steam coming up it? Ooh, boy, that's hot. Itadakimasu. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You can 1000% taste the shiso, but it takes off that edge. You know, if you have it raw, it's like, there's a kind of bitterness to it, but it's just the nice, like, herbal flavor of it. And the egg itself is really flavorful too, because of all of the added um, stock and everything. I was wondering how I was gonna be able to spice up tamagoyaki, but this is great. Okay, well, this was my, uh, my shiso dish. I think that this has been really nice, and I wanna be able to use shiso more and, and like, not be afraid of it, because I guess by itself, it's so strong, but then if you add it to things, it just adds, like, that nice herbal flavor. I wanna use it in way more things. This actually looks really nice. I'm very surprised at myself for being able to make it look so pretty um, on a first time attempt. The batter is really, really crispy and thin, which is exactly what you want for agadesh tofu. I was kind of worried about that, but yeah, it looks great. So let's taste it. Itadakimasu. I'm gonna try the ginger one first because I feel like the flavor will be a little less strong. I don't wanna ruin my palate with the plum one. It looks so nice. Mmm, wow. <laughs> Holy crap, that's really good. Like I would give myself a 10 out of 10. <laughs> that's amazing. Mmm. The batter is crispy on the outside, but it's actually slightly chewy. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's like the exact agedashi tofu batter that you would want. It's like the perfect consistency. And that was so easy. All I did was cover it in katakuriko and fry it. And I really love how the shiso gives like a refreshing balance to the slightly oily batter. It's really nice. I'm so glad that I gave shiso leaves a shot. I, I will definitely be making this again. Next up is plum. This one's a little on the creative side, I guess. Um, you don't normally see agedash tofu with any plum flavoring, but I thought it would go well with the shiso. So let's see if I was right. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> It gets really sour and salty at the end. Okay. My first bite actually tasted kind of sweet. It tasted a bit like a dessert, which was weird. It does taste really nice. I would say I prefer the ginger, but if you really like sour plums, like umeboshi, uh, I think this is this could be really good. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Normally when I try out a recipe for the first time, it does not turn out this good. Let's give this a taste, shall we? The shiso juice was really good, but I'm not sure about how it's gonna be just over ice. Ooh, whoa, that is so refreshing. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You get this massive like boom from the shiso. It's it's so overpowering. The ice comes in, cools you off. Shiso has that nice like, that herby, slightly spicy texture to it. Oh, it's fantastic. I hope you enjoyed my really simple tofu recipe. If you try it out at home, 
Please let me know how it went in the comments. I would love to hear from you. And tag me in pictures on like Instagram or Twitter. I would love to see your creations. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now. Tell me what you think of shiso kakigori. Is this something you're gonna try and make at home? What was your favorite shiso dish? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, I could not stop eating this. As always guys, I'll see you next time. But yeah, let us know in the comments down below if you cook with shiso. And if you do happen to make something with shiso, feel free to tag us. I would like to see your creations. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. It's uh, bonito flakes, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, cuts of fish. It's the fish slice is very thin. You, you've seen it. It does the dance on the okonomiyaki. You know what I'm talking about. Ow, I dropped the chopstick in my foot. I feel bad. How am I going to get it in this jar?